Hello fellow Bankmate Collectors, this is Glenn, back with another video, and today we're going to talk about the 1997 Australian Banknote $5 series. So, this series is actually a little bit more complicated than the previous series because we had um, three different prints. We had the BA to EA, so the first and last prefix, which was pretty much issued 1 million banknotes of each. So, it went from Let's have a look at, went from 999 to 1, so it's probably 999,998 banknotes, something like that. Then we have EB to HB, so HB is actually the last prefix. So there's actually more of the first prefix, so nearly a million than the last prefix. This one only had a 130... Ooh, this is where maths actually gets me. 135,999, something like that. Uh, so it's actually a pretty low run. So if you're looking for first and last prefix, HB is the one to get. Then we have the... See, it has a star. These are actually test series. So these were to test how the banknotes actually performed in circulation. And as you can see, it says 9999 to 990. So that is about less than 10,000 of uh, each AN to DN. And it starts from AN, but it ends at AZ. Starts at, last one is at DN. So all of these are actually pretty low run. And overall, um, I would say there's actually not many of these that have survived in circulation. Because a lot of people didn't actually know. So the signatures was McFarlane and Evans, so for all of them. But those are the ones you actually need to get. So if we have a look at these banknotes that I have here, uh, let me pick them up. So as you can see, they're all circulated, because look at this from circulation. So this one is EB. So this one actually has a low print of about 140,000, a little bit less. And this one's um, FG, so this one will probably be pretty much the same run. And that's why they all have 999, and uh, this one has 9, 2, 3. So you probably, you won't get any in the 7 or 6 or whatever, 100 series, 100,000 series. So they all start with 9, and some of them start with 8. So these are actually a pretty low run for most of these type of banknotes. So that's why they are actually are a lot harder to probably get if you're looking to purchase any of these banknotes. So the actual value, these are all probably in pretty extremely fine condition. Because uh, most of them don't really have that much damage. Maybe one fold from on this one. And the other two are actually pretty fine. And if we turn it over. This is actually pretty much how the back note looks. Same as the previous series. So that's actually quite nice. And they, they have uh, all big banding on this part here. So... In this condition, you're probably looking at has a book value of 25, but probably about $15 in extremely fine. If you want them in the uncirculated, it has a book value of 50, but probably 25 is actually a good value for these in uncirculated. Um, the book values are actually pretty much pre GFC, so uh, with uh, yeah, pretty much pre uh, GFC in their valuations current values on the actual market are actually about half but as we're going to go into a recession because of this uh <coughs> yes uh i reckon that a lot of these will actually probably become cheaper or a lot of people will actually take stock off the market because it's they're not selling uh they don't really want to give it away for virtually nothing and if you have these in fine or very good condition you're looking at pretty much face value 
really. So I wouldn't recommend you collecting anything in under very fine because inflation just takes away its value over time. Unless it's a very low run, like the 2014, which they didn't issue. So if you've got any, uh, it's ever released by mistake or it's stolen from the mint. But anyway, that is what you need to collect. Anything that's actually low run or low print. Same with coins as well. But for general circulation, like in 2016 series of banknotes, I actually wouldn't keep any that are under uncirculated grade because there's actually quite a lot out there. Uh, they'll be pretty available in uncirculated grade for at least 20, 30 years. So really just spend the ones that you actually have. And same with these ones, if you get 97, it's in very bad condition, just spend it. It's only worth five bucks anyway. So, um, that will conclude my presentation on 1997 banknotes. It's pretty much the only thing you need to look at is the serial numbers. Also condition as well. So anything after anything with A on it, like the first one with A, uh, generally a million, so it's pretty high value. And if the other letters is pretty low run, any of them with N to Z uh, is a test note. Uh, the general prefix prim, uh, the same value as these ones here. But if you want a first and last prefix, so AN or DN, you're looking at in very fine, probably about 150 to 300. And in the uncirculated, you're probably looking at well, a few thousand dollars. So they're actually the ones that get the test series. And also, I didn't say this before, last series of, last prefix of any banknote is actually better to get than the first series because first series, everyone knows what it is. It's BA. But the last one, it changes with the year. So if you find one with HB, then uh, that's actually good to keep. Or DN, the best to keep. So, because a lot, not a lot of people actually know which ones to actually keep when they actually get them. So anyway, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching my video. Like, uh, give me a video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and have an awesome bank that clicked in time. And I have this, uh, some links down below if you'd actually like to see. And uh, thank you very much for coming and tuning in. And take care.